All right, welcome in everyone to this Tuesday evening here on the Master of Dungeons Twitch channel, which means it's time for Dungeons and Deliberations. Uh, just a little show where I talk about certain things that I do uh, as a DM, of course, answer any questions that uh, viewers might have as well about dungeon mastering. Uh, we have been the last few weeks talking about uh, creating your own adventure, uh, whether that be uh, creating an adventure for a homebrew game uh, that you're playing with a bunch of computer friends, or whether you're uh, preparing an adventure for publication. Uh, we were discussing the past few weeks, uh, just kind of creating an adventure off the top of our heads, uh, not really looking at uh, any uh, the adventure that we're working on any time between um, Tuesdays. So we just uh, the last time we see it is when we see it uh, last saw it last Tuesday, and then of course uh, we won't see it again after we're done today until next Tuesday. So everything is kind of off the top of our head, just off the cuff, uh, writing it up as we go. Uh, we start with our adventure background. We went through it and started our adventure overview as well. And then, of course, uh, we do have our adventure hooks that will help uh, get the characters involved into the adventure itself. And then we're going to start describing each one of the sections. Like we have a call to action. We have a part one or part two and a part three. We also have a time limit area uh, here just to kind of give us a guideline about how long it should take to run. Because most D&D sessions, uh, as we've said previously, only last... Uh, usually around four hours, three to four hours. So this gives us a time frame to kind of, uh, when we go to write this or someone else goes to write it uh, from, uh, from this outline we're putting together, uh, they will have an idea about how long they have for each section to uh, uh, work for the players to be able to play uh, that section. It also helps for the DM to give them an idea uh, if somebody else is running it besides you, uh, how much time uh, you need for each uh, section. Uh, and then, of course, we started working on we were calling the adventure the Tower of Lore about the wizard lore who protected the village of Westfall. Um, so we got through part uh, the call to action. We got through the part one into the woods. Uh, we got into part two, arriving at the tower. Uh, and we talked about uh, what the characters uh, finally get to the tower. And last week, we started uh, working on the tower interior. Uh, what the characters are going to find once they get inside the tower. Uh, and we went through the first thing, the sitting room, uh, which would be about 30 minutes long is what we had and set it out. And then we had uh, the, uh, of course, uh, Lord's Blink Dog is familiar and his friend Darby of, of Violet Fairy Dragon uh, in the room. And they are kind of in there because Spot found some smoke methods and abyssal wretches that escaped from Lord's laboratory. And we gave, of course, as we do with most situations in the... Uh, uh, when we're writing, at least, uh, we give a resolution available for combat, for exploration, and for social. Uh, basically, role-playing, uh, exploration, investigation, stuff like that, and, of course, uh, resulting in combat. Now, I'd mentioned last week that we were going to talk about uh, probably bringing in, uh, to work on uh, bringing in uh, one of the map mapping programs that I use. Uh, I use primarily two of them. I use Campaign Cartographer 3+. And then I also use Dungeon Draft. Uh, campaign for Cartographer uh, is very similar to like the map you see here in the background. Um, this, like when I'm making um, larger maps, area maps of uh, um, areas around like the, the kingdom, like this is an area in one of my uh, campaign, in my campaign, my campaign, where I should say, uh, called Fort the Fort Carrick Regency, Fort Carrick Regency, which is a part of a uh, an area called Jubal's Hold, but uh, it's still kind of uh it's, they're kind of like independent they still uh, hold most of the laws of, of jubal's hold but uh, their area is kind of just a regency uh that protects um the northern area of jubal's hold from uh an area to the north of them called Durns county uh which uh once was part of their kingdom but uh recently chaos uh came into the realm yet again in another incursion and uh Actually, I should say during the Fourth Age, the, the incursion came, and since then, uh, the kingdom of the uh, Derns, Derns County has been uh, basically a wasteland. Uh, but I use cart Camping Cartographer uh, to create these uh, maps like this. I believe I have another example of it yeah, right here on this map here. This is what you can do with Camping Cartographer. Um, it's got lots of really great uh, assets for it, uh, different areas like bridges, of course, your roads, um, your different mines and such like that. Uh, the village of Stoneshire is kind of uh, like the 
basis where uh, the the adventurers that kind of uh, helped clear this land once this land was ruled by elves and uh, the uh, the humans and uh, other uh, races had to come in and help them uh, during the first incursion of chaos. And this is one of the uh, earlier settlements of the uh, uh, humans in the area. But these are the types of things that you can do with campaign cartographer. Um, but when I'm doing maps for like just battle maps for like adventures or battle maps for um, like dungeons and such like that, I'll use what's called dungeon draft. And dungeon draft is a quick, fairly inexpensive, about $20, I think. Uh, might be more uh, less expensive than that if you get it on sale. Um, but you can buy it at a number of locations. But I use dungeon draft for all my quick maps. Uh, I did start using... Uh, I initially started using Campaign Cartographer for dungeon maps and such, and you can get some really great looking maps uh, for those. The does Campaign Cartographer has a way steeper learning uh, learning curve uh, than Dungeon Draft. Dungeon Draft, you can sit down and pretty much start making a uh, a map from uh, as soon as you open the uh, the program. Uh, but Dungeon Draft, or not Dungeon Draft, uh, Camping Cartographer, uh, it does come with a bunch of great PDFs that can help you uh, work on uh, your map making skills and teach you how to use the programs. There's lots of you know, videos out there uh, that can uh, sh teach you and show you how to do certain things. Uh, but for quick ones, uh, I just use Dungeon Draft. And as I mentioned before, uh, I really like to have visuals of ideas to help me um, plan things out, uh, like planning. Those types of maps. So what I figured we could do today is go ahead and before we continue on with the rest of part three, and it uh, looks like we're losing a little bit of <laughs> internet issues tonight. <laughs> Only seems to happen on Tuesdays and sometimes on Thursdays. It's very odd. Maybe Sundays when I'm streaming by myself, but we'll figure it out. I think what it might be is that I need to uh, plug my uh, computer directly into my router instead of uh, relying on the wireless uh, being I'm in a downtown area of my city. <laughs> um, so what we're going to do today is go ahead and we're going to go ahead and uh, make the uh, map using Dungeon Draft of the crossing. And then we're going to make a map for the outside of the tower and then start working at least on the inside of the tower here. And then maybe go ahead and design like the first four with our four foyer that we have. And then go ahead and design the first room, the sitting room at least. And then go ahead and move on and start doing the second floor. Uh, that way it can give us some, some ideas uh, to work on uh, the rest of part three here. Um, and moving on from there, let's go ahead and edit this real quick. And we're going to say since uh, the sitting room is A, we're just going to go ahead and move down here. And make sure to put an A in front of that since we're going to have other sections of uh, the tower here. All right. So. Uh, let us move over here to our map making software. Hopefully this will show up uh, decently on uh, on screen. Uh, but again, as I mentioned, you have uh, it's fairly simple to make maps with uh, Dungeon Draft. Uh, I should be able to pull out, uh, let me see here, a recent map, uh, basement map. Let's see here, let's see, Ruin Mansion. All right, there's a Ruin Mansion for a DM. Uh, so this is the type of uh, maps you can make uh, with Dungeon Draft. Really cool, nice, uh, fun-looking maps. Uh, they are, of course, uh, from above. They're not isometric. Uh, to where they're kind of like isometric, you can kind of see it like from an angle. Um, but uh, they are, uh, of course, uh, uh, from above. Uh, but they do have great little uh, assets and things like that. Is also, uh, once you buy Dungeon Draft, any maps you create with it, you can use for private or commercial use. Uh, the only thing you can't do is sell the assets that are included in Dungeon Draft. Uh, they do have a lot of uh, third-party assets for Dungeon Draft as well. Um, you do, if you use those and go to sell those commercially, those are by individual license. Uh, most of them that... that most of the people that create assets for them, if you purchase the assets from them, it does come with a license to allow you to use them in your own maps. And you can sell your maps. You can sell you can sell the the uh, you know any publications uh, commercially and such like that. But again, you can't sell their assets as well. Uh, so there are a lot of great people out there that make uh, assets for this. Uh, for campaign to cartographer Mike Schley, who makes uh, most made most of the fourth and fifth edition uh, maps. Uh, for Dungeons and Dragons, uh, he does have a number of assets that are available through Pro Fantasy Software, which is uh, he makes 
uh, campaign cartographer, and uh, I end up purchasing all of his uh, assets when they come out, just so when when you make when I'm making overland maps or I'm making dungeons, I can have that feel of a uh, you know an official artwork uh, map or whatever from uh, a, a, a DD hardcover. Uh, so let's go ahead first. Um, we'll go ahead and just uh, start a new one. I usually make them 25 by 25. Uh, for one, that's not a bad size for a uh, tabletop. If you have, uh, if you're using like, a, oh, what is it, a Chessex uh, wet erase uh, vinyl map, or if you have like some dry erase, uh, different tiles and such like that, 25 by 25 is great. And also most VTTs, the standard when you go to just create a new page or map for them are 25 by 25. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is do some trains since we're working on the um, area of the crossing. We're going to go ahead and do a uh, like a, a faith force type of uh, encounter map here. Uh, so first thing we want to do is we have when you open up, you go to you have your, your settings here. You have your design like your building tool, walls, doors, cave patterns, roof tiles. So you can make like uh, the tops of buildings and things of that nature. If, for example, we were going to do something in Westfall, which we don't have to uh, do right now, but we can always do later uh, in the follow-up to the adventures. Uh, but then you have your terrain. So you have your terrain, your water, uh, any other materials like lava or anything like that. And you also have a path tool that can allow you to draw um, like paths, roads, things like that. Uh, then, of course, you have your object tool. You have your objects, uh, like all of your different tags. You have your tags down over here, like administration, armor, bar, things that you'd find in a bar, uh, things that you'd do different types of cages, uh, things you'd find in a garden, uh, all of that. And uh, you have your scatter tool, which say you wanted to throw around a bunch of these this little dirt piles. You can start. You can click on that dirt pile and start uh, dropping them around, and it actually flips them around and scatters them around the map for you, so you don't have to go through and delicately put delicate, delicately <laughs> put in the actual uh, different things uh, all on your own. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you have your uh, back tool, uh, and then we have uh, this section here. You have a little bit of environment, uh, some ambient light. You can put some light tools to give the map itself light, so you don't necessarily even have to put lighting if you're using a VTT on there. Um, you can put little lighting effects on there. Uh, they have different map settings, level settings, and they also have this really cool thing called trace image. Uh, and what trace image allows you to do is it allows you to put a image, JPEG, uh, PNG, etc., on the map itself and allows you to set the uh, opacity of the uh, trace image and then allow you to trace it onto your map. So if you have a hand-drawn maps, let's say, and you want to update something to digital, like I have so many uh, old maps uh, from back when I, uh, back in the day before, you know, the internet, before uh, map making software where everything was drawn on hand, uh, drawn by hand that I could uh, scan in and then upload those images here to, to a trace over the top of, which is really cool. Of course, it does have a text. Uh, so you can label your maps with text. Uh, it's got your text box if you want to put it into text box as well. Uh, it also got some of the prefab stuff. So we don't have anything because we haven't bought any uh, extra uh, assets or travel and sand and snow at our stream cut out yet again. <laughs> My apologies, um, especially to uh, Otter, our uh, uh, Twitch and uh, YouTube editor, as <laughs> we'll have to go through and piece these little chunks together. <laughs> my apologies. I'll, I'm going to work on getting that uh, uh, hard line into uh, my router done tonight after we're done with the stream. But as I was saying, uh, currently you have four, but you can always go in and unlock more. You can turn on more slots. Now we have it turned on right now. So we're just going to go with terrain grass. We can pick some of these different terrains over here if we want, like Cracked Earth, all of stuff like that. These are the basic ones that come with the game. But we're going to go with grass. We're just going to go with a fill. So it fills the whole map uh, with our grass there. Um, let's go next to, uh, we'll go back to terrain and we'll go with a water brush. Because as we mentioned, uh, the uh, in the crossing, let me go back to the crossing real quick. Um, in the crossing, it was a little brook, I believe, or stream. 
Game trails and such uh, provided by constable. Um, they cross over. Arrives at a wide stream with a few boulders on either side of the game trail. Here's a party on Capitol in the following scenes. Okay, so um, we know that there's a game trail on here. There's a small stream. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit uh, control and zoom out a little bit. Uh, if we hold down our mouse scroll wheel, it'll let us move around the map. Let's scroll out just a little bit more so we can see a little bit better. Now we're going to turn the grid off. Um, no, actually, I shouldn't say the grid off. Turn the grid off. We'll turn that off like that. We're going to leave that on there. Um, we're going to turn the snap off. That way, nothing is snapping. Uh, and we can actually position stuff where we want on the map. If you want to keep it on snapping, you can totally do so fairly easily. Uh, we're going to go ahead and shape the water uh, a little bit lighter on the outside of it. That looks good. And we're going to make it a little bit more, a little wider. Fill that area in there a little bit. And that's about five foot wide, and we did describe it there as a as a, a little bit wider. So let's go ahead and increase our brush size here to about there. We'll see what it looks like when we're done. Oops. And if you wanted to, we could always leave little things like that open, or we can actually go through here in a few moments and uh, add some boulders into the middle of the or rocks and such in the middle of the brook as well. We're going to have the game trail pass right through this area here. So let's bring that up a little bit wider as well. All right, so we got our little brook there. Uh, Obviously, if you wanted to, you could probably, I believe the, uh, if you notice, uh, if we zoom in here, you can actually see uh, the water does have a little bit of a rippling effect, which is cool. Um, so let us go ahead and move back down over here. There we go. Uh, let's go to our game trail next. Let's put our game trail in last. We can, that, that shouldn't be a problem. We can always put that path in last. I believe that was down here. No, is that what I'm trying? Yeah, path to it. So if we wanted to go through and put a path uh, in there, uh, you could also change layers. Like if you wanted stuff on different layers, like we wanted the water to go into the water level, we can also have put this going over. So this path will lead up to this area. And if we wanted to show it going through the water, we will show over the top of it. Um, we've got a blood trail. We've got a chain. We've got a cliff. We've got a rope. Um, just a regular old wagon trail. So we want to see how wide this is. We want the width to be a little bit bigger because it's a game trail, but it's not. Let's first just see how big it is with the five. That's not bad at all. You can actually bring that on through. Uh, so now let's just do this this way. Um, It's going to have a start at the river, and uh, that way it's not really going through. It's more a big thing of mud coming through. All right, so there's our path for the characters to come through. And then we're going to go ahead and start um, placing. We did, first of all, mention that there was a number of boulders near the path, or near the, uh, the ford. 
or they'd cross over. So let's go ahead and go up to all, switch to folder. So we can just go ahead and put a few boulders um, along the crossing. Now we can use our scroll button on your mouse wheel, your mouse wheel, I should say, uh, to uh, rotate uh, everything here. So just that way. Uh, let's go ahead and start putting in a few scattered trees. That way we can decorate around the trees. We can put more rocks later. Well, we have a fey forest, so if we want, I always like to use these because they you know, you can see over the bark and the tree underneath it. Uh, we can always use some of the bigger trees if we wanted to as well. We could even put in autumn colors or fey colors. We'd add a pink tree here or there and maybe a red tree since it is a part of the fey, fey area of the forest. Let's start with a few of these. Uh, and of course, you can set some of them off the side of the, uh, uh, just off the map. Rotate them around a little bit just to uh, change it up a little. That's a bit big. There we go. Like it. Tip it around. We don't really touch one another too much. Until we can hang over the brook a little bit. And we'll go back to some other trees around here too to fill them in. Oh, let's go back up here. We're not allowed to log this deep in. We mentioned that as we were writing it, so we're not going to put any uh, empty ones there. But let's just go ahead and fill a couple spots in here. Um, as we did describe it as a thick forest, but at the same time, uh, we don't want to. We're not, might not want to just saturate the map with nothing but trees. So we can go ahead and put in like some bushes and things like that as well. Uh, if we wanted to, we can go over here and click Scatter. And then we can go to, let's see, I think there's a push tag. Yeah, there's a push tag. Uh, and then it's supposed to be working that way. Yeah, maybe not. Mm 
to put some bushes along the road. Yeah, it's really having a hard time staying on uh, online today. Put a few rocks in the water. Maybe a little bit larger one over here. Let's jump with some more grass. And just decorate it, you know, however you'd like to do. If you feel that there are areas that are, you know, missing something, you can always fill that in. Uh, or you could, uh, you know, always come back to it and uh, uh, add more to it later. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to save it first. We'll save it to our dungeon draft folder. We're going to say of lore crossing. And save it. And then if you want to, uh, it'll save it as a uh, dungeon draft file. Uh, and then if you want to export it, you just click on export here. Uh, you will export mode, whichever mode you can go through as a JPEG or universal VTT, uh, PNG, etc. cetera. Uh, you can also uh, do the different sources, the brightness, uh, the opacity, uh, all of that stuff like that. Uh, how many pixels you want and all stuff like that and export it. And it will show you, uh, ask you what folder you want to send it to. And then you will have it as a PNG or JPEG that you can pull out or or as the universal VTT, uh, just pull out into whatever virtual tabletop you're using. Of course, there are different, many different ways uh, you can put it into a PDF format once you have it into an image, and you can print it out as your own battle map if you want to as well. But that gives us a visual for the crossing, which is great. So that when we, uh, we or whoever is going to go to actually write the, uh, the uh, adventure, uh, we'll have a visual uh, idea of what the crossing looks like. Uh, we can even make it uh, a little bit darker if we want to uh, and uh, dim the uh, view a little bit. But we're going to leave that as it is for now. We have saved it. Let's make sure it's saved. And then we're going to go back to New. Click OK. So now we're going to work on the tower. Um, let's go ahead. Oh, we don't need to zoom out that far. Now, if I recall, 
It has been a while, my apologies, since I've made a map for this. So we're going to building tool, we're going to go shape. Uh, we're not going to go with, actually we're going to go with wall. We're not going to go with uh, interior yet. I guess we can go with the wall here. Let's first uh, do the, the, the full terrain in the background. Terrain brush. I'm going to go back with the grass fill. Uh, then we're going to go with the building tool. Go to the circle. Uh, the, we'll make the cobblestone walls. Oh, let's make battlement walls. Uh, this is a tower. The wizard's tower, after all. Uh, and then the interior. Um, we want to make. What do we want on the bottom ground there? Doesn't really necessarily matter. We can always change the color of the carpeting. Um, right now, that's the carpeting there. No, that's not. Sorry, that's the wood color. Let's just go with wood. That should be fine for now. Now, this we're going to go ahead and snap. That way, the circle is the right size all around. So we're going to go up here. So that's four by four on that side. We're going to take it down to four by four on the other side, which is right to here. So that's the interior of the tower. Um, then we're going to end up placing where the door will be. And we said a big iron door, I believe, is what we said. And we'll place it, the door for us, all along the edge where we want to place it. We're just going to place it here. That way it's easier. Um, let's go ahead and take it off. Snap. Nope. We do want it back on snap because we want to be able to rotate. And we can't rotate it. Can we rotate it? No, it's not nice to rotate. All right. No worries. Now let's go with the walls. Build some more walls inside. From two concrete walls on the outside or the inside, because we did describe the uh, foyer. The foyer. Uh, let me go ahead and go back over there so we can see what the foyer was here as well. Um, all right, we didn't specify the dimensions there, which is fine. So what we can do is we want to go ahead and. Bring that there. And we did mention that there was another door on the other side. Um, right there. So this will be the room that will have the, uh, the armor and the sword in there. Uh, we did mention bracers on the wall, I believe. So let's go to objects again. Comments? No. Torch? Yep, there we go. This one to take off the snap. We're going to zoom in a little bit. That way we can place them on the wall. Just place them on the line right here. Wait a second, hold on. Let's search for... Nope, oh, okay, zero. And we can change the flooring in here. I believe we should be able to. Let's go no wall. 
And let's make this cobble on the inside. Um, edit points, there we go. Oh, because oh, we took away the wall down there. That's right. So we'll just leave it as it is for now. Because uh, we don't want to go into the exact teachings of how to uh, run the uh, uh, program. Uh, but let's go ahead and zoom out. So we have the foyer uh, there. We also said there were some stairs as they entered in. Um, it's going to be a fairly large area here. Um, let's go ahead and put some more walls in there. I want that to go all the way out. Try to snap off. That way we can put like some uh in the description that there might be something over here, it might be secret doors or something like that. And let's, I don't remember if we, I recall if we said there were stone stairs or wooden stairs. We did not specify. So we can go ahead and uh, the stairs are going up to the right. Okay, so we want to make sure that we put the stairs going up to the right uh, over here. To the snap on since we had the snap on from the uh, yeah, let's do that part. No, it's not nothing doing our stairs. Okay, I don't know. No, it just did our walls. That's all good. <laughs> all right, back to the passing. They're not going to be perfect, but it's okay. <laughs> we'll stop it right up there. Stairs going up. Uh, I also believe we said that there was a rather large fireplace opposite in the description. Use that one, or we could use this one. Make it bigger if we wanted to. Did say it was rather large, didn't we? Back to tags. Let's 
wood over there by the fire. Blacksmithing tools. A little shovel over here to shovel out soot. Tail. Uh -oh. hey Fires were inside and around the room main many plain but plush reading chairs and side tables, a few short bookshelves scattered throughout the room, one day books, large stuff beholders mounted above the fireplace. The rolling tea cart to the left of the fireplace. Alright, uh, so let's see if we have a cart. So we have a small cart. We can obviously shrink that down a little bit since it is a Supposed to be a rolling tea cart. Oh, he has a cup, right? A couple of small little teacups on the uh, cart. Um, let's go put some. There's some tapestry. There's a portrait. There's portals. Painting gives us all this extra stuff for some reason, which is all right. Target. Well, let's go back over the tag and see there's decoration, I believe. Uh, oh my goodness, we keep losing our feed today for some reason. Apologies. Structure. Some tables. Hmm. Interesting windows. Want decor. Yeah, here we go. All right, decor. Uh, so we can take some of these portraits. I also want to make them a little bigger because the scale is down a little bit. Take them up to scale of 1 5. There we go. We can free rotate them. Side here. I don't know if we have a beholder or something that can represent a beholder. Because we always do a monster trope, a monster, uh, something like this. Kind of look like a beholder head. On the top there. 
Uh, then we want to go with chairs. We did say there's a plush reading chair, so uh, we'll go with this one. We obviously want to turn the scale back down to one. Actually, let's, let's place our bookshelves first. Snap those as well. Take our plus chairs. We can always change the color too if we wanted to. We could change the color to something more, something different if you wanted to. But the, uh, the actually this color doesn't seem too bad to be honest. Well, let's just go ahead and just stick with that one. Actually, we should put some bookshelves up near the fireplace. Go. Small bookshelves, as we mentioned in the description of the adventure. Um, back to chair. And we can take some of these chairs. There we go. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and set, mention some uh, side tables. I should just go ahead and put a couple up here by this uh, fireplace, though. Small tables here and there. Oh, definitely small table. Right. I'll just drop the scale down to point five. Scale back up. Some more stuff there. Oops. And of course, we can put some books on these uh, other tables around here. Let's go ahead and take the snap off. Mm -hmm. 
Bueno, saltar. Bottles and some scrolls here and there. Don't have to be a lot of them. Uh, but yeah, small little decorations like that here and there. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and save this first. What we'll do is we'll save. Uh, more. First floor. And of course, we'll go through we'll go through and design some of the stuff on the outside of the uh, uh, tower because the players wouldn't uh, actually be get into the tower until after they finished uh, everything that's going on outside, uh, which can give the author or us, whoever's writing it, uh, more ideas. Uh, but I'm going to sign off right now. It is the top of the hour. The stream uh, is coming to a close. Uh, we'll come back next week, of course, uh, and maybe uh, on these, give us a little inspiration. We'll go ahead and move back to the other part there. Um, and yet it cut out again on me. <laughs> so uh, thanks for watching today. Tomorrow we will, of course, have our Tavern Talks. We'll be going over some of the 1D&D playtest material. Thanks to all our supporters, especially for our patrons for Patreon. Uh, if, you happen, if you would like to help out support the channel, please consider becoming a patron or subbing here on Twitch for us. Uh, the link to our Patreon page as well as our social media accounts can be found in the About Us section down there below here on Twitch. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, perhaps give us some likes, retweets, all that good stuff. Every sub, like, and share uh, does help us tremendous, uh, tremendously. Uh, you can also support us by clicking on the About Us section below and join the Master of Dungeons community Discord server where you can help shape a caring, inclusive, and accepting community. Uh, we do have our merch store as well. Uh, we do have a uh, shirt for the uh, month, for the Pride Month up there also. And, of course, uh, tips are always welcome but not expected. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow for Tavern Talks at 7 p.m. Eastern. And as always, happy adventuring.